Thanks for joining us in this devotional that we call Loving Truth. We love truth, which means we love the Bible. God has told us that his word is true. Those are the words of Jesus. And Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. So when we say we love truth, we love Christ, who is the personification of all that is true, who is the revelation of the God, the true God who is, who is God in the flesh as we celebrate every Christmas season. And he is the one who's given us the written word of God. That is, the triune God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit have given to us a revelation of who they are and uh, what God desires. And the Holy Spirit has caused men to write down these things in what we know as our Bible, the Holy Scriptures. And so we love truth, so we want to understand it, so that we might embrace it, and so that we might live in it. I'm reading from 1 John chapter 2 and verse 1. My dear children, I write this to you so that you will not sin. At the end of chapter 1, he said everyone is going to sin, but he doesn't want us to get the idea that that is to be expected or that that should be uh, our normal default, that we just keep sinning and sinning and sinning. He's saying, I'm writing this so that you won't sin, so that you can stop sinning and grow in grace. But when we do sin, we have an advocate with the Father. He is Jesus Christ, the righteous one. The word advocate, the Parakletos is the one who is called alongside of us to help. He is our defense attorney, and he pleads the fact that he died on the cross for our sins and pleads to the Father about the promise that has been made that all who trust in him will be forgiven. And so we are forgiven. Jesus is the righteous one because when he lived on this earth, he never sinned in thought, word, or deed. In him is no sin, says the book of Hebrews. And we're told in 2 Corinthians that he who knew no sin became sin for us. When he died on the cross, he was the sin offering for all of the wicked things that we had done. He's the righteous one, and he's the only one who could die in our place. Verse 2 says that he is the atoning sacrifice for our sins. So he is the righteous one, and he is the sacrifice. In the Old Testament, the sacrifice was uh, some animal uh, that would be slain and the blood placed upon the altar or sprinkled upon the altar, and it was the blood of the covenant. A life had to be given. Uh, without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness of sins, the Word of God tells us. And so Jesus died in our place so that we could be forgiven. My God is reconciled. His pardoning voice I hear. He owns me for his child. I can no longer fear. With confidence I now draw nigh. And Abba, Abba, Father, cry. So God has given his son, for God so loved the world that he sent his only begotten son, so that whoever believes in him would not perish, but have everlasting life. That Jesus becomes the sacrifice for our sins. But notice the verse says, not for ours only, but for the sins of the whole world, even dying for those who will not believe in him. One drop of the blood of Christ can save uh, everyone. In fact, if there were thousands of worlds multiplied with all the people that live in them, uh, one drop of the blood of Christ would be enough to cleanse them. When Jesus died on the cross, he gave a sufficient sacrifice so that everyone could be saved. The problem is not everyone will trust Christ. Not everyone will believe in him, but he is the atoning sacrifice for our sins, not just for ours, but also for the sins of the whole world. I think some people think that God is only a God of love, and they forget that he's a God of justice. He's a God of mercy, but he's also a God of wrath. You can read about that clearly in the Old Testament, uh, almost 600 times the wrath of God is mentioned. Romans chapter 1 talks about the wrath of God being poured out upon the world. Uh, I'm reading from John Stott, a great Bible teacher, who says that propitiation is needed 
from God. Propitiation is the word uh, that refers to God forgiving our sin and God's justice being satisfied. He is appeased. Stott says the need for propitiation is constituted neither by God's wrath alone nor by man's sin alone, but as the two come together. Sin is lawlessness. It's a defiant disregard of the law of God, and it deserves the judgment of God. It is this divine judgment upon human rebellion which makes the barrier to fellowship with God, and therefore there can be no expiation, no removal of man's sin without propitiation, the atonement, uh, the appeasement of God's wrath. God's holy antagonism to sin must somehow be turned away if sin is to be forgiven and the sinner is restored, and sinners cannot do that themselves. Only the righteous one who becomes our advocate and the holy one who becomes our sacrifice can our sins be forgiven. Do you see it? This is the good news of the gospel. God died for you. He loves you so much. But if you don't trust his son, he who has the son has life, but he who has not the son of God has not life. First John chapter 5. So let me urge you to trust him today and find forgiveness. Heavenly Father, it is so encouraging to hear the good news of the gospel, that your love goes out to all, that Christ died to save the world, and that everyone who puts their faith and trust in the Son will have eternal life. Impress that upon our hearts today in Jesus' name. Amen.